Hello friends, welcome back to the bench. Thank you very much for joining me. Our patient is Z690. Uh, very nice board. It's uh, of course my favorite, my favorite socket for the torture. I gotta see if I have even um, those sockets in stock because it's been raining these sockets lately. Oh, the, oh, <laughs> oh, the socket looks something like this. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what happened here, but it probably got uh, a little damaged and then, you know, the owner just didn't care and just threw it on the pile and, and the rest of the damage is the result of that because that looks like, yeah. I did have a uh, message from one of the, the jobs we did uh, recently. The board doesn't post, but the CPU is not getting hot and that is very unusual because you know, my understanding is that for the V core to not solder on, a whole bunch of pins would have to not solder on, like ridiculous amount of pins, because the the majority of the socket is grounded V core, and just you know, few pins for this and that, obviously memory and you know, all, all kinds of data rail and stuff like that. Uh, but what the customer noticed is that when you press on the the socket, the it, it changes. Right? So that's usually what I say about the PCH, right? Press on the PCH and see if there's a difference. That means uh, the, the solder cracked under the PCH. But in this case, it looks like it's the CPU. So I offered uh, the customer to, to ship it back and I'll reflow the, so uh, the socket, this time using different flux. And the different flux that I have, this is uh, my 559 Omega. It's really good. This is 559-6. So it's the six, sixth version of the, uh, of the 559 formula. And this one is amazing. It cleans uh, with dry Q-tip. It doesn't uh, clog up the, the soldering iron. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't burn. It flows really nicely. It has amazing wetting properties. And it's a very simple formula, actually. The, the one thing that I was struggling with is basically mixing three ingredients. It's just essentially three ingredients, but you have to um, not only catch the, the sweet spot of the ratio of each component, but also it is very important for one of those components to be basically trace amounts. And that's something that I was struggling with. That's why my previous formulas, although they do work, uh, they're very thick, right? They're much lighter in color. Right, I love it. It works perfectly fine, um, but it's very thick. Right, this one is nice and runny. Uh, you don't have to use any force to squeeze it out, so it works great. And it's a little bit more aggressive. So I went back on the because I've been going back and forth on the a citric acid, but turns out it it actually works a lot better with citric acid. It improves wetting, and obviously it's a it's a combination of few factors. Um, uh, but main uh, main benefit is that it cleans really easy. You don't even need uh, alcohol, right? After soldering, it remains liquid uh, in a, in a way, and it's not sticky, right? Let me show you real quick. So I'm gonna squeeze a little bit over here. Um, oh, there was because uh, I, I just cleaned the needle. There was too much alcohol in it. So we have a mixture of uh, flux and alcohol, but here we have the flux, right? It squeezes very nicely. It's on the verge of being liquid. As you can see, it's not sticky. It's not sticking to the, uh, to the needle. Now let's burn it off. As you can see, it's not boiling. There's a little bit of boiling action, but it's essentially not boiling like the other ones. And it doesn't burn. And as you can see, it keeps the, the soldering tip nice and clean. It doesn't form this black suit on the soldering iron. Now my uh, previous blend would be starting to turn brown now, but as you can see, this one's not turning brown. It's perfectly clear. So you can see what you're working on and all that, right? You can barely even see it, right? It's completely clear. You can see by the, that little, little bit of boiling at, uh, by, the, by the tip. Right, but that's true for uh, pretty much all the types of flux, right? And still no burning. This was uh, quite a quite a few seconds of, of heating it up, 
no signs of burning. And now I'll take a dry Q-tip, right? No alcohol, just pure dry Q-tip. And look at this, see, no sticking, right? The previous one would leave a very sticky residue. This one does not, and it's attracted to Q-tip. So you don't even need to use alcohol to clean it, right? It stays at this viscosity for a long time and all of that flux is flowing to the tip. So if you just put the tip in it, you can see how the flux is flowing in the tip, right? So that's amazing for cleaning, especially in between cups and small components and stuff like that, like here. You just press the Q-tip and the flux is flowing into the Q-tip just like alcohol would, leaving the surface perfectly clean, non-sticky. I obviously put way too much flux over here, so it's going to take a few Q-tips to, to clean this off. So instead of wasting Q-tips, let's get a little paper towel and let's wipe it like this. Actually, let's just press on it, right, and remove the towel and the flux is flowing into the paper towel. Then just wipe it off from everything. And the surface is, well, it's not sticky in a way that, you know, that the little fibers of Q-tip are gonna be left in it, right? That it's gonna just, uh, the fibers are gonna get stuck in this stickiness. But when you press the, the finger, right? It is a little bit sticky like, right? Because I didn't use any IPA, right? But just one spray of IPA, wipe it off and all the stickiness goes away. But essentially this could be left like this. It doesn't bother me. So it's not as sticky as it used to be. Now the, this formula is a result of uh, Tony's challenge. He sent me a uh, 213A flux and some jigs to do the reballing. Uh, so I started working on a formula that would uh, perform well on uh, reballing and also be as easy to clean as that one. And this is the one, 559-6. All right, enough about the flux. Now let's get to work. Let's replace some sockets. Let's speed up the footage because it's gonna be so boring. And I'll see you on the other side.
You are going to love this flux. You know how I know? Because I love it. Check out the cleanliness of the socket. No signs of sweating. Not even a little speck of, of flux left. And guess how long I kept it in the, in the cleaner? Five minutes. Usually, to get this level of cleanliness, I have to do 20-25 minutes to get this level. And still, even after that, uh, there, there are some signs of sweating around the cups in some places. This one cleans perfectly. Not a speck left. Well, actually, as I said it, I see a little speck over here. Let's see. Uh, this little speck. But that's fine. I'll blow it uh, in, uh, in a second. But perfectly clean. Now, you may have noticed that I drowned the, flag, uh, drowned the socket in flux uh, at roughly when it when it was at the, the last step 215 so it went to 205 the socket dropped I don't know when exactly but it, the socket was already dropped and I just drowned it in flux and the reason for that is uh, to make sure that every bowl is actually soldered before I didn't used to do that because if I did with my previous formula to clean the the socket from all the flux residue, it would take probably at least half an hour, maybe 45 minutes in the ultrasonic cleaner and the water temperature at 60 degrees. It was really hard to clean it, even though it was comparably easier to some other types of flux, uh, but this one cleans amazing. So definitely I'm sending, uh, I'm sending a, um, a batch to Tony today probably most likely <laughs> and Tony you're gonna love it you're gonna love this flux now there's gonna be a little explanation because uh, I am working on a new formula that is going to be a synthetic formula uh, because there's no way to achieve the effects that you can with synthetic so I just want to have two kinds organic and synthetic but it's uh, it's in the works We'll see what's going to happen with uh, with that. I don't know if uh, it will actually go to fruition, uh, but hopefully it will, and hopefully it'll be great. But this one is amazing. So I can't wait to hear from the customer whether the board works. It should. Uh, alignment looks good. Um, it should. Everything should be soldered on because of that last batch of flux just dropped when the, the, the board is hot. The balls are soft when they get a when they get flooded with flux they should uh, bind the board and the socket really well hopefully we'll see and also um whoever contacted me about the the one of the previous jobs with the socket just apparently not being soldered on because when you press on it, it it works or it changes the behavior um send it in i'll do it with this flux and I'm also very curious whether whether that's going to work. Of course, no no charge, uh, no shipping charges, no nothing. Just send it in. I'll reflow it. I'll ship it back. Hopefully, that's the one that is uh, that was disassembled, not the assembled one. <laughs> um, but even if it's the the assembled one, just send it in, and we're going to redo it with this new flux, and it should work a lot better now. Alrighty, I hope you guys found this useful. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you guys in the next one.